Come on, clap your hands for the man of God. Let's stand to our feet and give God the glory today. Amen. How many appreciate our bishop? Come on, how many appreciate him? Amen. Look at your neighbor's head. Just tell your neighbor he's serious about that conference now. Amen. We want everybody to be here. Well, today we were supposed to have Evangelist David Smith with us. Got a phone call from Evangelist Smith. They are in the middle of an eight-week revival. Miracles and healings are breaking out right where he is. And so he couldn't move from where he was. So he's asking forgiveness from New Life this morning. So what should I tell David Smith? Can I tell him that y'all still love him? Can he still come back? Amen. All right. I'll call him and let him know. So, so we had to call um, Brother Collins to see if he could preach this morning. And turns out, amen, he's available today. So he is here. Amen. We're glad to have Brother Collins with us now. Amen. Amen. Glad to have him here. Praise God. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles very quickly to Psalm 24? Psalm 24. I feel the presence of God in this house. Somebody's going to get the breakthrough they've been praying for, the healing they've been praying for, the deliverance they've been praying for. Amen. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of course correction to get us to where we need to be. God's word has the answer. Psalm 24, if you found it, say amen. If you're still looking, say please wait. Psalm 24, I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. It's a short psalm, but a potent psalm. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them up you everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory I want you to lift your hands for just a moment Somebody begin to help me pray in this building right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we need your presence. We need your glory to fill this house. Lord, we need your Shekinah glory to permeate this entire atmosphere. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be lifted up. Let your presence fill this place. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Have your way today, Lord God. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord Jesus, that we can ascend into your holy hill. We want you to have your way in our midst. Lord God, save today. Deliver today. Heal today. Sanctify today. Set free today through the power of the blood of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord and shout unto God. 
with a voice of triumph. Come on, there's some shouters in here. There's some people that have a testimony in here. There's some people that God's made a way for you. And because God's made a way for you, you refuse to stay quiet. No one can shut you up. God's been too good to you for you to keep silence, but you're going to make a joyful noise. in this way. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you today about the only way to bring in the King of Glory. The only way to bring in the King of Glory. Jesus makes things a little difficult for us sometimes. Jesus makes us uncomfortable sometimes, and I know everyone won't admit it today. But if you're honest, Jesus has a way of upsetting the apple cart, if you will, disturbing the tranquility of the self-righteous. He does it on purpose. Because he says things that kind of changes your perspective and kind of rearranges your thinking with reference to sin. Because you can think that you got it going on and have no problems. I don't know how we do that because in the face of the law, it is clear that we are messed up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Before the blood of Jesus, the law has enough evidence against you to destroy you. I ask people in my Bible study all the time, how many commandments are there? Usually folks tell me 10. Because we know about the 10 commandments. In Exodus chapter 20. But really, the Ten Commandments are the commandments that Israel heard audibly. That is, God spoke from Mount Sinai audibly into the ear of the children of Israel. It's the only time in recorded history that God has ever spoken to an entire nation at once. But when the presence of God grew overwhelming, the children of Israel began to fear, recognizing that they were in the presence of a holy God. And anytime you get in the presence of a holy God, your unholiness becomes readily apparent. And so they said to Moses, listen, we don't really want to talk to God directly anymore. You ascend Mount Sinai and hear the word from him and bring us back the rest of what he has to say. Ergo, consequently, there are really more commandments than 10. In fact, there are 613 positive and negative commandments in the first five books of the Bible. 613. I don't care how cute you are today, you broke one. I don't care how sophisticated or religious you are. Don't care if you've been in church all your little life. I don't care if you came out the womb pure as the driven snow in your own mind. You broke one. And there is a catch-all in the law that really if you broke one, you're guilty of all. I heard a nursery rhyme or some kind of rhyme when I was growing up. It said it's a sin to steal a pin, much more a greater thing. We tend to put sin in degrees. That is, some sin we view as worse than others. And don't get me wrong, 
on the face of it, there are some things that seem to be much more egregious. There are some things that are called abominations, if you will. However, the penalty for all sin is death. So it doesn't matter if you did a big sin in your mind or a little sin, all sin is death. And the reason that is the case and the reason we have a problem with that is we compare ourselves among ourselves. So, for example, I compare myself to Osama bin Laden. And if I compare myself to Osama bin Laden, I'm righteous. Y'all ain't talking back. We compare ourselves to Hitler or Jeffrey Dahmer or, or the Manson, Charles Manson. Those are wicked people, patently wicked. We can, we can call them out as wicked murderers, mass murderers. And so if we compare ourselves to them, we're righteous. But God is not comparing you to Osama bin Laden. God is comparing you to himself. Now, if you think you're righteous... Compared to God, like my secretary would say, you need to have several seats. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me yet. Because your righteousness in the presence of God, the Bible declares, is nothing more than filthy rags. Now, here's how Jesus makes it uncomfortable. I might be doing good based on what I know, but then he steps in and says something that goes beyond the surface and grabs a hold of something deeper than what the eye can see. Because God just doesn't know what you're showing on the outside. God knows exactly what's going on on the inside. You can fool some folk sometimes. You can even fool some folk all the, or most of the time. But guess what? You can't fool God anytime because he knows all of your business. I'm, I'm only reaching to about five of you. Let me see if I can preach it a little further. Amen. Everything you do and think is naked before Almighty God. So Jesus steps on the scene and deals with the self-righteous in Matthew, for example. He says, well... Um, you have heard that it was said of men of old time that you should not commit adultery. And some folks would say, I know that's right, Jesus. Jesus, you better preach that. I don't commit adultery. I never mess with anybody else who wasn't my own. Then as if Jesus heard you in your mind, he responds immediately, but I say unto you, if you so much as look at somebody who ain't yours. Yeah, I knew I was only going to get 10 of y'all to respond. You've committed adultery already. I'm preaching to somebody here. So what Jesus is saying is, I'm not dealing with your surface Christianity or what you're putting on the outside to fool the folk around you. I'm, I'm all up in the Kool-Aid. Can I take it to 2016? I'm all in the Kool-Aid and I'm not even bringing any sugar. I'm just going to call it like it is. Your business is on front street with God. I haven't even started preaching yet. And I can feel something rising in the building. Where is this man going today? Understand then that Jesus wants us to move beyond the superficial and go to something deeper than what we see on the outside. Because God does not see us the way man sees each other, but sees our heart. And so then, the reason I'm bringing all that up is this psalm in particular, Psalm 24, is one of the psalms of David. Not every psalm is a psalm of David. But this one is identified by most scholars as a psalm of David. In particular, it is connected to the bringing in of the Ark of the Covenant into the place that David had prepared for it as a dwelling. David had sought the ark of God because it was not where he was. And he wondered why no one sought after the ark. So he 
went for the Ark of the Covenant to bring it into the holy city or the city of David. However, on the way to the holy city, they were trying to bring in the Ark of God on a cart. And that was the wrong modus operandi. Because the Ark of God, which represented the presence of God and the glory of God, should never be conducted on a cart. It really has to be brought in on the backs of the Levites. So there was a prescribed methodology for bringing in the glory. Well, the ark began to shake on the cart as it was moving, and one of the men that were walking with the cart saw the ark, and it seemed as if it was about to fall, so he stretched his hand out to steady the ark. And immediately God killed him. David, just like us, was shocked at this killing that took place. So immediately, seemingly, when someone was trying to do something innocently. It wasn't as if the man was trying to do a bad thing. He didn't want the ark to fall. But no one can touch the ark and treat it as if it's a common element. There is nothing common about the presence of God. Some folk come to church today as if we doing God a favor to be in his presence. And I'm, I'm trying to help somebody today to recognize that when you get a chance to come into the presence of God, we ought to be grateful for the blood of Jesus right now. That's why you ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. That's, that's why you don't come in the church and act like you all are that in a bag of chips. You, you come in the church and recognize that if it had not been for the mercy of God and the goodness of God and the grace of God, I couldn't have come through those doors. So when you come here, you ought to come in with your hands up just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you that I'm still breathing. And thank you that I'm not dead yet. Oh, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't get common with God. Amen. Jesus ain't your homeboy. God is, God is not your friend down the corner. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he, he is wonderful in majesty and glory. And there is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against him. And so God killed Uzzah. David was shot. He said, you know, I don't want to play with God. I think I'm going to leave that ark out there. So he put it in the house of a man by the name of Obed-Edom. And he left it there for a few months, contemplating what to do. But he heard that Obed-Edom was getting blessed. He said, now... I left that ark down in Obed-Edom's house, and ever since it's been there, the favor of God is there. Miracles are happening at Obed-Edom's house. Provision is being released down there. His children are being blessed, and his whole family is receiving a miracle because God's presence is in the house. And David said, wait a minute. No, I can't leave that ark down there. I need that ark for myself, and I wish... I wish some folks would get like that in church sometime because I want somebody to kind of get the mindset. Like I'm not just going to let everybody else receive a miracle and a healing and the victory and the breakthrough and deliverance. When I come to church, I'm just watching everybody else get blessed. No, I've got to participate in this miracle. So you know what? Amen. If I got to be the only one, I'm going to lift my hands and bless the Lord at all times and let his praise be in my mouth. I'm talking to a few folk now. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking to somebody that came to church today that says, I need an answer from Almighty God, and I need it from my house. I need it from my family today. I need, I need God to do something for my children, and I heard that there's a blessing going on over there, so I'm getting ready to grab a hold. However, there is a way to do it. Oh, yes. There is a 
prescribed methodology. And so David consulted the scripture and put things in perspective. He set things in order and he got the Levites to take their position. And the Bible says that as he walked with the ark, he was so overwhelmed by the presence of God that every six steps he took, he started to give God the glory. Every six steps. Can you imagine then all of these Levites robed in white linen? David himself put away his royal robes and put on one of the linen ephods of the priests. So now David looked like one of the priests. And he's walking and he is bringing forth or ushering in the presence of God, the glory of God with this ark. And so now this particular psalm, scholars believe, has to do with when they got to the base of the hill of Mount Zion. They got to the base of the hill where the tent was or tabernacle of David that David had erected a tent that was designed to house the glory of God. And so the psalm starts out by declaring God's sovereignty over everything. Coming out of Exodus chapter 9 and thinking on that, David says in verse 1 of Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. David wants everybody to understand that the God that we serve has absolute dominion over everything in the universe. The whole earth belongs to God. Somebody should have got excited just on that by itself because... Sometimes the enemy got you feeling like he has control over some area or the other. You need to tell that devil today. I'm going to remind you that everything down here belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there. I can't get no real folk yet. So, amen. Somebody needs to tell the enemy, enemy, you've been moving too much in my life and in my house and in my little apartment. And this, this place is not big enough for the two of us. And I just happen to know that you don't have the title deed to anything. The earth is the Lord. My bank account belongs to God. My job belongs to God. My car belongs to God. Hallelujah. This church belongs to God. And I belong to God. Devil, take your hands off of my life, off of my family, off of my future. Somebody ought to get militant in the Holy Ghost today and tell the enemy enough is enough. You don't own this. I read the book. I found out who has the title. It is an uncontested title because he has it by virtue of creation. I'm preaching to somebody here. When you create something, you own it. Y'all ain't saying something. I said, when you create something, you own it. And the truth is nobody down here can really create because we make stuff out of stuff that already exists. But God calls those things that be not as though they were. He brought the heavens and the earth out of nothing. It is his by divine right. Oh, I feel like lifting him up today. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. I just feel like giving God the glory today. I just feel like magnifying him and just making the spirit realm upset. I don't, I'm not really backing up off of this. I'm saying uh, that Jesus paid it all. Uh, I'm saying he owns everything. Uh, I'm saying all power uh, is in his hands. Uh, I'm saying he's the great I am. Uh, I'm saying he's omnipotent. Uh, I'm saying he has all power. Oh, somebody ought to wave your hands and begin to shout for joy. You just found out that your trouble is not as big as you think it is because God is in control. Ooh. 
Y'all ought to just walk out of this church today and talk to your car and say, God owns you. Talk to your house and say, God owns you. Talk to your corporation and say, God owns you. Talk to your body and say, body, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and God owns you. It is his a divine right. Oh, yes. Got to hurry here. Understand then. Oh, I got to lift him up today. Woo. Well, I feel a little praise on that. Somebody need to just go ahead and give a second win on that right there. I feel like God just stepped in the building and said, I'm getting ready to inhabit the praises of my people because they recognize who I am. And the more you glorify him for who he is, the more he can do what he wants to do in your life. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world, the Hebrew there for world means an inhabitable place. Anywhere there is life, God owns that. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Tap your neighbor said, I feel your miracle right now. Just tell him, I just, God just stepped in the building already. Somebody, you waiting for some, I'm trying to move on, but I just feel the Holy Ghost is already healing right there in the pew. He's, he's already working something out right there where you sit. Yes, Lord. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. A world and they that dwell therein. The reason is he founded it himself on the seas and established it upon the floods. And here is where now the psalm shifts because the scholars believe that this king now would stand at the base of the hill and that King David now Considering who God is, immediately a question arises in his spirit. Because when you really think about the Lord, you realize how holy he is, how mighty he is, how awesome he is. It's probably thinking back to the fact that somebody tried to touch that ark and God killed him. On the spot. Probably considering that God is a consuming fire. A holy and a righteous God. Oh, pure. With no iniquity in him at all. No evil or unrighteousness can be found in God. He is absolutely holy. It is his preeminent attribute. So holy that the angels cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth. Lord Jesus, help me today. David now overwhelmed by the holiness of God before we can take one step up this hill. We've got to ask. Who, who can really climb up this hill? Because God's up there. Mm. Mean that God transcends the mundane. So sublime is his presence. It, it requires ascent. Physically in this case, but spiritually, in reality, what David is saying is, who can reach to the lofty heights of the holiness of God? Who can, who can get up there? <laughs> what can I do to, to deserve to be in the presence of that God? Because that God is not like any other God. It's not like my homeboy down the street, this 
Your life is hanging in the balance when you come with this God. Because life and death are in his hands. He is sovereign. Not only can he kill your body, Jesus says he has power to take your body and your soul and cast it into hell. Fear him. This little warm, fuzzy Jesus that pop Christianity has given us is a fake Jesus. That's not the real Jesus. Y'all not hearing me today. The Jesus of the Bible, the Bible says, not only is he the Lamb of God, you better believe he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back to rule with a rod of iron. He's about to break nations in pieces. And you better believe we're in the end time and folk are tripping right now, but they're about to find out that Jesus is real. So David is saying, who? Who, who, who's going up there? Who thinks you're so awesome in and of yourself to just start stepping up this hill like you got it like that? Mm -mm. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That's the first question. Second question is after you get there, who can stay? Y'all see this? Not only is one thing to get in his presence, David is saying, can you abide in his presence? It's one thing to, to climb the hill, but when you get up there, will you find that you are comfortable in his presence? Can you, can you stand there? Because there's some folks in scripture that are cast out of his presence. They get in there, but they're cast out as soon as they get there. Some folks, the Lord talks about, he doesn't even know them. How did you even get here? One parable Jesus says, he says some guy got into the wedding and then he checked it. I said, friend, how did you get in here? You don't have on the wedding garment. You're, you're not even dressed appropriately. And I'm not talking about your clothes now. I'm talking about your soul. Your soul is, is, is undressed. It's... So he said, how do you even get into this way? Bind him and cast him out. That, that's what the master said. So the question is asked, and thank God it's not left unanswered. Because now four, there are four stipulations. There's four ways that you can get to ascend the hill, and when you get up there, you can stay. Firstly, he says you've got to have clean hands. <clears throat> clean hands. Secondly, he says you have to have a pure heart. Thirdly, your soul shouldn't be lifted up to vanity. And fourthly, you shouldn't swear deceitfully. Now, those four stipulations on the surface, you know, it takes a little bit more digging to find out what that really means. Clean hands, pure heart, soul not lifted up to vanity and not swearing deceitfully. Because I don't know about you, I want to go up to this holy hill. Something in me is saying there is more to life, come on somebody, than just dwelling with the surface dwellers. And I believe there's some folks in this building that says, I'm sick and tired of the same old, same old. I've got to get up into the presence of God and, and whatever I've got to do to get into God's presence, that's what I need to do. Can I just tell the truth to somebody in this building? You might have to leave some folk that love it down here and go where you need to go. Look at your neighbor and say, don't hold me down today. Here it is. Firstly, clean hands. Clean hands has to do with what happens on the outside. This is, this is stuff that you do. Stuff that is observable. Sin that we can see. Turn, for example, to Galatians chapter 5. And let me show you how your flesh can really block you from the presence of God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. And, and I'd love to just be happy, but we got to call some things out. Galatians chapter 5, 19 says now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The works of the flesh. Somebody say flesh. 
with, now that means everybody's flesh, not just some people's flesh, because when I read this stuff, some folks think that it doesn't apply to them, but flesh is flesh. And all of this is in your flesh. And, and if you let your flesh do what it wants to do, it will act on these things. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't go up into that holy hill. This list that I just read for you, if you're in any of this, you can't go up in that holy hill. So if you're in adultery, and remember Jesus messed it all up, he said it's not just doing adultery, it's thinking adultery. I wonder if I still have the right church. We were shouting a while ago. I lost a whole lot of shouting. If you are committing fornication, that is sleeping with folk that you ain't married to, if you're in uncleanness, that's in any kind of sexual perversion. If you're in lasciviousness, which is unbridled lust, am I still in the right church? Which is just looking and looking and looking, sometimes on your television, at stuff that don't please God. If you're in idolatry and that's putting anything before God, whether it's your job or your money or your children or your man, y'all ain't talking back yet. If you're into witchcraft, which is simply using manipulation to put yourself in a position of power, if you hate anybody, if you're just contrary, if you put stuff in the wrong perspective, if you're always upset, if you're always causing strife, if you're always causing sedition, if you come with false doctrine, if you envy somebody's Mercedes, if you're murdering people in your heart, if you're into drunkenness, y'all ain't talking back. If you getting high and smoking weed and popping mollies and drinking cognac, y'all ain't talking to me. If you're a party person, y'all ain't talking back. Party over here, party over there. That's revelings, hear me somebody, and such the like. The Bible said heaven is not your home. Boy, I wish I could tell you that you could, you know, get your groove on and become the twerk master and make it up into glory. But can I just preach the truth to you? You're going to have to get out of some mess if you want to ascend this holy hill we're talking about here. Come on now. Don't, 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 don't make me lose faith in you this morning. Because if I was talking about how you can get blessed, somebody would start to dancing. If I showed you how you can make some money, somebody would start to shouting. But what I'm trying to show you is bigger than that, better than that, more important than that. I'm talking about do you want to get connected to the King of Kings? Do you want to have a relationship with the God of glory? Then you've got to come out of this stuff. Put your hands up in the air and say, God, I want my hands to be clean. Somebody ought to just say, Lord, these hands right here, they've been dirty. These hands right here, they got me into some stuff. These hands right here put me in some bad places. And Jesus, I don't want to miss heaven. When the trumpet sounds, when you crack the sky, I've got to go up Clean hands. But David knew if you're going to have clean hands, it's got to start on the inside. Because whatever is on the inside eventually will be manifest on the outside. Whatever's in there, you can, you can hide it. But sooner or later, if you know, it's coming out. 
Sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure. You don't curse normally, but, but. There's somebody really mess with you. Can I preach like this this morning? I just feel the Holy Ghost. I mean, you know, you know, I, I don't normally, I don't normally tell folk off, but. I love everybody. Except you. I remember what you did. And I hate you. So Jesus now makes it plain for us because you got to have clean hands. But the second thing you got to have is a pure heart. So you turn to Matthew chapter 15 and I'll show you something. See. In Matthew 5, Jesus already talked about blessed are the pure in heart for they'll see God. Well, how do you get this pure heart? You've got to understand what's coming out of the heart. Mm. Verse 16, I'm going to start from verse 16 of chapter 15 for context and just read down very quickly. Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entering in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. So what Jesus is saying here is what's coming externally is really not what, what's going to mess you up. So stuff from the outside, that's not what's killing you. Here's what's killing you, though. Verse 18, but, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Are y'all still with me here? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. All of this is in the heart. Jeremiah said the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. People tell me all the time that they have a good heart. The truth is none of our heart is really good. Our heart is in trouble. I'm talking to somebody here. We have a heart condition that requires a heart transplant. See, what's got to happen with us, it can't just be a band-aid that we get on this. We need God, and I don't know if I'm just the only crazy person, but I want God to do something so radical on the inside of me that when you see me, the folk that knew me before might not even be able to recognize me now because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, things are passed away. All things are become new. Is there anybody in the building that says, God, here's what I want you to do. Take out this dirty heart and give me a clean. Psalm 51, David prayed it like this, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Somewhere along the line, you got to say, I don't want to be a faker. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to look good on the outside and be all corrupt on the inside like the Pharisees who were whited sepulchers look great on the outside, but inside full of dead men's bones. The devil is a liar. I want to be real with God in the light and in the dark. When you knock on my door 12 o'clock midnight, I I want to be the same way 12 o'clock midday I don't want to have a double life somebody needs to say no more double life I want to be real with God every day all day all night I want my heart to be clean he said now you can't lift up your soul to vanity I don't have time to go into all of this but in Ecclesiastes Solomon said I had it all money clothes music property everything I wanted I got it I had enough resources to get whatever I wanted but he said I found out that after all of that it was just vanity vanity of vanities all is vanity so many folks spend their life at the gym trying to look hot biceps and triceps bulging six-pack abs going straight to the lake of fire. I'm in connection to God. You can talk about me. You can stab me in the back. You can turn your back on me. You can walk out on me. But I'm going to hold on to the unchanging hand of God. I'm going to hold on. 
I found out I can't trust everybody anyway. Y'all ain't going to preach with me. Because there are people I put my trust in uh, that I tried to impress. Uh, and I found out they weren't really with me from the get-go. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Time out for the fake friends. Uh, time out for the fake relationships. Uh, I'm done with all of that trying to impress folk in relationships. Uh, I'm going to impress God. And if that impresses you, we can walk together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just go ahead, tap your neighbor on the back. Say, I still love you. Amen. But I'm not trying to impress you. Furthermore, your opinion is not going to change me anymore. I've decided to live my life by the word of Almighty God. Somebody need to holler for God I live and for God I die. I'm living my life for Jesus. I'm living my life for the king. No man or woman down here. Somebody needs to just say it out loud. Say, I'm not going to hell for nobody. Just tell them, I'm not. If I got to break up with you, then bye. I'm just letting you know right now, I'm not leaving Jesus for you because when I got cancer, you can't heal me. When I'm broke, you can't. I need somebody who's a healer. I need somebody who's a savior. I need somebody who's a deliverer. I need somebody who's a way maker. I need somebody who can bless. Oh, yes. You see folk running, you don't know what they're running about. Just leave them alone because you don't know like they know what God did for them. There are people in here with a testimony that God brought me out and God was there when nobody else was there. When oh, I'm done with vanity. Chapter 21, verse 8 says, I'm going to read that for you. I got to go. I'm, I'm I'm not going to keep you much longer, I know. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Saints, I'm not going there. Y'all hear this crazy preacher on the pulpit today. I said I don't want any part in this lakefront living right here. You can keep this address right here. Somebody needs to make it up in their mind. Keep that lake. I'm not going to be among the fearful. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. I'm not going to be among the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. And you best believe I'm going to tell the truth. Because there's a lake, a real lake, fire and brimstone. People don't want to talk about hell. Hell is real. And can I just take it a step further? This is the lake of fire. Hell is going to end up in the lake of fire. Hell is just a jail. The lake of fire is prison. If you want to know how that works, assault somebody before you leave today. We will lock you up and put you in Orient Road jail. Then you go to trial. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And get sentenced to prison. Oh, yes. Jail is just to hold you over till prison. If you die without repenting of your sins, without getting baptized in Jesus' name, without being filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to go to a holding cell called hell to wait until the great white throne judgment when God is going to lift up hell and shake it out into the lake and then throw hell itself in the lake. I'm not going to that lake. Hello, somebody. And so David gives this now, and I'm done, these four requirements. And he says, now, if we can get it right there, 
then blessing will be released. He said, now you can receive blessing and righteousness from the God of Jacob. He said, this is the generation of them that seek thee, that seek your face, O Jacob. In other words, then God is saying, somebody wants this. Everybody not planning to go to hell. Somebody got a made up mind that I'm going to be with Jesus. If I'm the only one in my family standing, I'm going to stand. Lord, have mercy. Can I tell you, you got to have a made up mind that if nobody else wants to walk with Jesus, I'll walk by myself. And if nobody else wants to live for God, I'll live by myself because I'm trying to bring in the glory of God. David is saying if we can get this right, then we can turn around and say the glory of God has a place to reside. Can I preach to somebody? It don't make sense to praise God if I'm toe up from the floor up. I got to, I got to get a washing of the blood so that when I lift my hands, my hands are clean and when I shout for joy, my heart is pure because I don't know about you. I want God to move into my house and I want God to live there because God is knocking at the door and he's telling someone lift up your heads oh ye gates even lift them up you everlasting doors then the king of glory shall come in now some churches amen they'll preach to you about blessing all day and tell you that everything is all right and that you can stay living in sin and still shout and then they play the Batman music and everybody going to giving God a dance but when I dance I don't want to dance with the devil y'all hear this preacher I want my dance to be holy is there anybody in the building that said God is holy and he wants us to be holy so when I lift my hands I need the blood I need the blood. I need the blood to wash me and cleanse me and deliver me. Songwriter said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody ought to wave your hand and say, God, wash these hands with your blood. Wash my heart with your blood. Wash my mind with your blood. Deliver me because of your blood because I want the king of glory to come into my life who is the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle somebody needs God to show up oh yes I feel the Holy Ghost here somebody ought to just ask your neighbor excuse me because I need God to step in I want God to grab a hold of my family I need God to grab a hold of my children but you know what most importantly above all else I must be saved I've got to be delivered I've got to make heaven my home is anybody in the building with a made up mind that I'm going to glory and no devil is going to stop me. Oh, shatarabha sata. I got to hurry here. I'm done. Hallelujah. Somebody can start to stand. God Almighty is reaching out for somebody in this building right now. I feel the presence of Almighty God. Who's going to go into this hill? And who's going to stand in this holy place? Oh, rabba shatarabha saya. Listen. Jesus told one man, you want to go into the holy place. He says, you've got to be born again of water and of the spirit. Why do you have to be born of water and the spirit? Because God has to radically change your life completely. And I don't know about you. I don't want partial deliverance. I don't want halfway salvation. If I'm going to get this, I want everything that God has for me. I'm talking to some folks in this building now with every eye closed, every head bowed. I feel God tugging on somebody right now. Somebody that says, Lord, I want to be honest 
with you because I need you. I'm not talking about needing a man now down here. But somebody needs to get honest with God and say, God, I want my hands to be clean. I want my heart to be pure. I need you, Jesus. If you're in the building right now, do me a favor. Just ask the person beside you to excuse me and just walk on down to this altar right now. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. This doesn't have anything to do with man. This doesn't have anything to do with getting the approval of other people. I want you to liberate yourself from your neighbor's opinion right now and forget about what they're thinking and says, I've got to head down to that altar. I've got to go down there. Hallelujah. I've got to get clean hands and a pure heart. And I know only the blood of Jesus has the ability to deliver me. Come on, wherever you are in the building, come on down here. Come on, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, brothers, come on, sisters. Come on, man. Come on, woman. Come on, boy. Come on, girl. You can't go up this hill unless you have clean hands and a pure heart. Come on. Come on. God sees what we can't see. You can fool folk, but you can't fool God. And you, somebody needs to say, I, I don't want to fool. I don't want to try to fool God today. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with God today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. We're getting ready to repent all over this building. Come on, there's others that need to make that step right now. You know God is calling you. Come down to this altar and say, Lord, I want to surrender all on this altar today. There's some things I want you to fix that only you can fix, and I want to put it on the altar today. Somebody in the building needs a touch from God. Somebody needs deliverance. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs salvation. Somebody needs a miracle. I want you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to answer you like Peter did on the day of Pentecost. Who can get into this holy hill and who will stand in the holy place? Peter's answer was repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Prayer warriors, I want you to begin to pray right now. There's still folks coming up. Amen. On the right and in the middle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's room up here for you. Press your way in. Will everyone begin to lift their hands all over the building now, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord God, we acknowledge that our hands have not been clean. Lord, we admit that our heart has not been pure. Lord God, we have lifted up our soul to vanity. We have sworn deceitfully. But Jesus, we know there is power in your blood today to forgive us of our sins. You said in your word, Lord, that if we confess our sins, that you'd be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. We confess our sins today and ask that you have mercy upon us. Lord God, we repent and leave the world behind. Lord Jesus, we want to be filled with your spirit so that we can live a holy and a righteous life before you. Have your way in us, Lord God, creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Lord God Almighty, give us clean hands and a pure heart so that we can bring in your glory. We want to bring in your glory. We want to bring in your glory in our lives, in our family, in our house. We know we've got to do it the right way. Father, have your way in us today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift those hands to heaven. Begin to cry out to God. Let God fill you with his spirit. Create in me a clean heart. Come on, say it. Create in me a clean heart. Thank you, Jesus. Purify me. Purify me. 